Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show, presented by TLR Coatings. Make sure to check them out for all your powder coating needs. We're back together. We're back together. We're back in studio, so everybody can quit your bitching about it because I oh, only run in studio. Why didn't you take a background? Look, man, when I go on vacation, the last thing I really want to do is roll up any of this and put it <laughs> in my suitcase. That's we're not that weight, professional yet. Space. I don't care. Get over it. We're it's not fine. Yeah, we're not that professional. It'd be like Weej and just sit in my hotel room and put the logo on the TV behind me. Just goes in the bathroom, sits on the toilet. Yeah. So, anywho, uh, we're back. We're talking about Oakland. Crazy, crazy race. Um, let's take care of the paperwork stuff, though, before we jump into that. So, don't forget, follow us on Facebook. Someone's supposed to be writing a blog. Dude, shut up. I keep forgetting. Through, what are we at? Five weeks now? You've wrote one? Yeah, it was great, though. Nobody cared. I don't. I honestly don't think anybody cared. I mean, if they did, let me know. I don't know. I didn't get any feedback. So, anywho, um, so follow us on Facebook. Uh, he might write some more blogs. I'm just. I don't have time to do it right now. I'm a little busy with other things. Uh, also, um, make sure to follow us on there. We are going to start doing preview shows exclusively to Facebook starting Daytona is what we decided. Correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Starting Daytona week. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Travis Ridenauer. Uh When I go to the races, I post all sorts of picks and stuff like that. So um, A2 picks were good, man. I like huh? them. I like the A2 picks. They were good. But that's not even all of them. Oh, well, I have a good. lot more. They were pretty I good. have a lot more. Those are also there's also some going on Facebook. So um, and then if you want to support the show because YouTube's being real cool and they're taking away our monetization because apparently you gotta have a thousand subscribers now. I don't know. Um, you can help us out on Patreon. Go on there. Uh, I'll link it down below in the description. All this stuff will be linked in the description below because um, I don't necessarily remember all the websites. Uh, but on Patreon, you can donate on there. Help us out. I'll send you something cool. Maybe like a poster off the back. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, you never know. Um, Amazon links that are in the description. Click those. Go on Amazon. Buy something. Even if you don't buy what's in the link, still helps us out. We get a little cut of that. Or you can go and buy uh, show t-shirts. I've designed one on Teespring. It's pretty basic, just a logo on a shirt. Uh, those are like $23 plus shipping or whatever. Um, but again, link will be in the description below. Any of those you click on and buy something or donate or whatever will help us out and we will appreciate it. Uh, anyway, moving on. Let's talk about this track a little bit. Uh, soft and ruddy. Wildest race of the year. Wildest race so, in a long time. So far. So far. Best day of your life. Keep, so keep, far. Keep watching the races. Their ones might be better. Yes. Uh, but yes, no, it was a wild race. Did you did you like the track, actually, though? Like, before we get into it, did you yeah, like the track? It was all right. -ish. I think the ruts were the only, the only reason there was say, no racing. It was pretty basic, and I heard a lot of the interviews and things like that. A lot of the guys said it was a pretty basic track, mm -hmm. even walking it. I didn't think the whoops were... Gigantic no, or they got separator, out yeah. So. Pretty pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Other than that, I thought it was tightish and it was really soft. That's what I thought. There was a lot of really tight sections in it. Um, for me, you know, we praised last weekend in Glendale with how mentally draining it was because you had to be perfect through the rhythm sections. Just because if you push it in a little bit too deep, you'd miss time on flat land in the transitions. Whereas this track was mentally draining in the sense that. There was no really where to breathe, release. Like other than down the start straight, you had to be completely centered on the bike because if you weren't, for a snap second, you'd cross rut, get loose, and probably hit the ground. But like everybody, probably like seventy five percent of the people. I think what I heard was uh, at least thirteen out of the twenty two guys hit the ground in the main. Oh yeah, and then in practice, like in the B practices, was like everybody. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure everybody at some point crashed during the day. But to me, this was one of those tracks, and I texted you guys after the practice about the wild night thing. I could have never imagined it was going to be this crazy, but it was one of those tracks where it wasn't about your fastest lap. 
because you know if your fastest lap is a second and a half two seconds better everybody knows you can put in five lap heaters and then put out six seven seconds and then just kind of settle in and let that carry you through to me this was more about was your second fastest lap close to your first because if it was that means you were putting in consistent and you weren't really fluctuating up and down you know whereas a lot of guys could put in two good laps and then four probably terrible ones or just mediocre ones you know and even if your first was substantially better it wasn't going to be like a second and a half better than everybody else where you could gap so it was just so mentally draining in the sense that your technique had to be perfect every lap, every section, at least by the mains. The heat races, you know, they flattened out and dozed it, so it wasn't that bad. But it was just, I could, I can guarantee you by the end of those mains, those guys were coming off and they were going, dude, I'm just glad to come out in one piece. Mm -hmm. Because we saw how many times, and even the guys that crashed that were up front that didn't necessarily hit the ground, one pivot here, one pivot there, and they could have been out for the season with where they landed when they crashed. So I think the ruts definitely played in the only reason it was uh, it was good racing and crazy racing. If that, I saw the same thing. When I looked at the track map, I go, wow, they're going back to being conservative. It's going to be like A2. It's going to be a one-line goat trail, and everybody's just going to huck the same line. So I liked it in the sense, but we always get this with Oakland. It's always soft and stuff. So I thought the track was good in that sense but yeah we we got lucky with how good the dirt was at the beginning of the day and then obviously it just got worse now i'll ask you something i've heard talks about all week how do you feel about the afternoon race now obviously this one's on the west coast so for us it's great because it comes on at seven goes mm -hmm. till 10 we can go to bed at a decent time as opposed to staying up till one in the morning watching a west coast race like we are next week but <laughs> How do you feel, like, say we have an East Coast afternoon race, what do you feel about those? Well, we've talked about this before, how on the marketing side of things it's great because Supercross, you know, I don't want to say the cliche thing that it's like you get these new people in here and stuff. Like, everybody knows that. Supercross is different than outdoors. Outdoors is the hardcore fans. Supercross, hey, I want to get my kids into the sport or see this, so I'll take them into the city because they are, most for the most part, in big cities other than, you know, when they go to Foxborough at Gillette Stadium and a couple other places. They aren't big, you know, so you can go in go through the day, experience it, and then by the end of the night you can take a family down the city and you know go have a nice meal. But to be honest with you, what I heard, the reason why they did the day race in Oakland, the gangs. They didn't want to deal with that well, at that nighttime. Doesn't, that doesn't surprise me either. Get everybody out of Oakland before <laughs> Oakland gets bad. But honestly, I said this a couple years ago when we first had the first day races, what was it, two or three years? I think it was only like two years ago, maybe three, that if it worked, I'd like them to do more. It's just better because it's hard for us on the East Coast a lot of people, we are getting older, it's hard to stay up till 1 in the morning, and then just to deal with you getting out of the stadium at 10 o'clock, having to deal with all the traffic, it's hard. Like People don't want to deal with all that crap. So I think if it keeps working, I think it'll be better. More people will like it and stuff. And honestly, I know the whole feel of Supercross is at nighttime. People got to remember, when this sport first started, 85% of the Supercrosses were daytime races. Mm -hmm. Daytona was a daytime race for years, for yeah. 20 years. Yeah. So I think... I think it's kind of a good idea, to be honest with you. But the main thing that I heard for Oakland is, is nobody wanted to deal with all the crap that if it got 10 at night, because there were a lot of situations where people got their shit stole last year. Yeah. So. So. All right. Anything else you want to cover about the track or anything I forgot paperwork-wise? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty good. Get going. Okay. Then we're going to move on. We're going to do 450s at the beginning again, because everybody seemed to like that. So mm -hmm. 450s first. Let's start down here, and we'll work our way this way. Bowers tried to fly like a Thunderbird. Bowers tried to fly like a freaking eagle. It was great. If you haven't seen the crash, go back and watch it. Oh, I think everybody's seen it already. I, I hope so. Watch it again. I have. I, okay, so I didn't tell you this. I actually, uh, well, I did tell you that I signed up for media credentials mm -hmm. yep. um, to try to get for some of the rounds, so hopefully bring you guys some better footage. Uh, feature however i've heard both ways that feld is either they just let you right in or you got to provide like your firstborn child and your birth certificate to get in as a sacrifice but so i haven't heard anything back on that but i did sign up for their media website so i got all like there's you can download the review videos mm -hmm. you can download those in an mp4 format and freaking use that stuff so i'm sure that's in there if i had more time to edit this i'm super busy with my, with my other company, so I can't. I don't have time to do that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm slacking. But if I had time to do that, I'm sure it's in there. I'd download it, put it in. But yes, Bauer. So <laughs> that was such a great crash. He just like G'd out at the bottom of that pocket and just off the back. Let's like just say that it's good though that he's okay. Yeah, it's, that could have been yeah, really it's bad. Great that he's okay. It fucked up his face. Oh yeah, it did. It's bad. But he's all right. 
Um, but wow, that was, yeah, I like here. I thought he was trying to quad it, and I was like, oh, he isn't pulling that back. No, no. How about, hold, I know we're talking 450s. How about that Josh Pettis crash? In oh, Josh Pettis? Yes. Yeah. In the, uh, in the heat race. Oh. Like, dude, if you watch that, he is feathering the brake all the way up the berm until finally he's like, okay, see ya, and just, like, jumps off. That was great. All it reminded me of was Arizona, like, four years ago with Martin, where he got loose, framed the landing, and rode the front wheel all the way up the berm, except he didn't drag, and it literally just kept rolling up the berm, and he launched into the backside under the concrete. Who that, was the guy that launched into the fence uh, by that the was Colton that. last year, right? Oh, no, I thought you were talking about the Nets thing. That was Colton. No, uh, no, I know that. No, he launched over the berm into the fence that goes around the... Uh, the oh, that was... Um, that was last year, the year before. Yeah, where he literally landed, like, stomach yeah, on the fence. Uh, yeah. That was... Oh, dude, that was... Um, I don't remember who it was, but it was... That was actually rate. a Factory 250 guy. Because he was battling with Mitchell when that happened. Um, crap, I don't know now. I don't remember either. But anyway, okay, back to 450s here. Uh, I feel kind of bad for Bowers. He was having a good day up until that point. In fact, he was running 10th when he crashed. Yeah, if he can continue that, I think that if somebody, God forbid, I hope this doesn't happen, but if somebody gets hurt, he's going to get a fill-in ride soon. I think so, too. He deserves it. I mean, he was, what, 6th or 7th fastest he's in practice? He's fix his face first, though. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, anyways, enough with Bowers. Uh... Cole Seeley. Dude. A little gutted oh, for that kid. God. I thought he might get one last or on Saturday. I thought I thought maybe. But that's just man, between that and the starts, like those one small mental mistake. He looked great in the heat. Oh, he was gone. Had he, he not crashed, he was gone. He was gone. Yeah. What was he, five, five and a half out or something? Uh, something like that. He was pretty far ahead. And what really killed him was not only did he crash, he got stuck on that and couldn't get his bike to roll up that. Dude, thing. whatever he was on, I don't know if he was on a piece of metal that was sitting there, dude, it was starting to burn rubber yeah, off the Yeah, I saw that. Um, dude, the I love Cole to death. He's fourth in the points, but that's just small stuff like that. Even on a track like that, where if you were off just a snap second, it's why I just can never pick him to win a championship because mm -hmm. there's one small mistake that puts him back. And dude, it sucks too because, like I said, had he not crashed, he was gone. Oh, there was yeah. nobody was going to catch him. No. That was his type of track, being very precise. But man, you got to feel gutted for him because, like, dude, that I, that I do. that was probably the Ugh. best he's ever ridden in his life. Yeah. He was great. He was great. And I thought, like, when he hole shot and started pulling away right at the beginning, I was like, oh. He's gonna win. Yep. He's going hands down. He is winning. Yeah. But he didn't. He couldn't do it. And you know, it's eerily reminiscent of ninety-five percent of the two hundred and fifty guys with consistency. And the next guy we're gonna talk about, Eli Tomac. I mean, can we? Can we? Can we just? Can we just? Everybody admit that Eli is officially done. Oh yeah. He's done. I said that in the group text the other day. He's done. There's no. There's no title chance anymore. He's fifty-two by now. <laughs> here's the thing. What do you think he's going to do to Barsha? Because <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, you, I don't think Kawasaki and him are happy about it. I thought it was a nice racing yeah, pass. Let's, let's talk about that for a split second before we go into depth. I'll give my account of that, and then you can give yours. Go for it. Eli made the mistake, and I said this in the group chat. Old Bam Bam, new Barsha, you don't leave the door open, especially on a 180 like that where literally you, just, you have such a transition where anybody could either run it in and literally tee you up, go for the exit in the corner and shut the front door or shut the door on the front end. What I originally thought in real time, because I didn't go back and watch this in replay, is I thought what happened is Justin ran it in deep. Eli, kind of like a Savachi Osborne thing, tried to lean it on him, stand in it, and then just knife the front end. Well, you can clearly see, and I saw this frame by frame, that right as Justin started showing him a wheel, Eli was already starting to get too much of a lean angle and loaded up on the front brake. So he was going to knife the front end no matter what. It's just obviously when Barsha ran it in on the front, front end, it just... It compounded everything for Eli, but Eli was going down on that no matter what. So mm -hmm. all these people, whether you're a Barsha hater, an Eli lover, dude, it wasn't a dirty pass. It was not. It was racing. You don't leave the door open on a 180, especially before the finish. And, man, I just, I don't feel bad for him. Like, it was I dumb. Don't, I don't it was either. horrible racing IQ. You do not leave the door open, especially whether it's Barsha has got this newfound way of thinking about things or not. You don't. And I'll say this to your point before you, before you go in on it. If he wants to get into it with Barsha, I hate to break it to him, that's the last guy you want to get into it with. Because if we thought Barsha had found this newfound sense of being calm and not making enemies, if Eli, and I hope this for both of them, especially for Barsha being third in the points, he doesn't get reduced to, hey, I'm just going to play, you know, run it on you, you run it on me, and then I'm going to tee you up and take you out. Barsha will blow him off the berm and will hit him so hard it will put him in the hospital. Like, I don't want to advocate for that, but let's be real. 
The only other guy out there that you don't want to get into a pissing match with is Bowers. Because Eli's not a, I'm going to be a tough guy today and I'm going to run it in on you because you took my points. Like, no, don't get into a Barsha, dude, because I'll tell you right now, you will regret it. So that's all I got to say. Like, I don't feel bad for Eli. Horrible racing IQ. Don't do that. I don't either. I thought it was a pretty clean pat. Like, I mean, yeah, he went up, he got into whatever. Yeah. But it wasn't like, okay, for an, a good example and a prominent one, it wasn't the Anderson case where no. he went straight to the exit he of the corner. the corner at he, least. Yeah, he just came up with him. You know, boom, here, I'm here, you're not coming down, and away he went, you know? And, like, okay, yeah, that was that was the outcome. Um, but, yeah, but at this point now, with Eli not having anything to lose, it would not surprise me if they come together more often than not. Do you agree, though, that that'd be a bad idea for Eli? I don't think it's a great idea, but at the same time, I don't think his concern is his own safety at that point. I think his concern is, well, I'm not in the points anymore, you're not going to be. If he gets reduced to doing that, where he just gets into this back-and-forth thing with I mean, Marshall... Maybe, well, and maybe not. This is, yeah, all, we're not, this is all just... This might be an exaggeration. You know, uh, I, what I think, but... Well, if he gets into that, which... Very well. We've seen guys just lose it mentally and stuff like that. But in your opinion, if Eli stops focusing on winning races and just still putting an astra or putting a, an exclamation point that he was the fastest guy and gets into it with Barsha, which is back and forth, is that going to kind of take away what, what you think about him? If he just gets to reduce to trying to run, I mean, because I, I, I would probably be in the same boat. Of like, but the thing though well, is, now, is that now I'm completely, like, partially, I'm done on my own. But I was making somewhat of a comeback at this point. But it, but if you're looking at it that way, it wasn't Barsha's fault that we both agree on that. Well, yeah. I so I, the thing is, if he gets into that, Eli can get if he continuously does that, can get DQ'd from the season. Mm -hmm. Like AMA can just be like. Poof, Pop you out and pluck you away, and I don't think you're going to see it multiple times. Uh, what I, unless unless it turns into a, like you said a pissy match between the two of them, mm -hmm. where he goes in, takes Barsha out next week somewhere. Barsha comes in the next week, takes him out. I mean, then you're going to start to see different stuff. But problem though is, is that Barsha was catching him. But let's get into Eli. The whole of the night um, was shitty, dude. All day, it, Bowers out qualified. Uh, I just I mean, what do you want to talk about? It was what? Bad. No, what I want to get into is is that. What is up with his sense of urgency when he goes down? This is like the third time we've seen... And he did it in East Rutherford when he hit the deck three or four different times. He has no sense of urgency to get back on the bike and keep pushing forward. And like I said in the group text, and I really wanted to get into this with Matt, but he never texted back in it. When Eli went down, he ran a 105. JG had just rolled up, hit the flat spot in the berm, and went off the backside, ran a 110. Eli was in 20th. JG was in 22nd for four laps. JG catches Eli back and forth, passes him, and puts nine seconds on him. What the hell is wrong with Eli's mental game? Because all I can think, the only thing, the only conclusion I came up with is, is when he gets into a situation, and East Rutherford, perfect example last year, when he doesn't gel with the track, when it doesn't fit his style, where he can just manhandle and slam the bike around and let the traction do the work, he just mentally implodes. Because, dude, when have we ever seen Eli start in seventh and go backwards in the first three laps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. By that, JG, no less. That was bad. Like, dude, and I'll stick by it. Even if he didn't have that situation with Barsha, I don't think he was getting top five that race. No. So. That was a bad, I, dude, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't, do you, I don't know. Do you, so after seeing that race, and can, then we can, can we just say he's the epitome, I, was it your group chat I was in or somebody else's, that he's the epitome of Ricky Bobby, he's either first or last? That's no, that definitely wasn't me, but. There is an in-between here. Can we just agree, though, that after that race, that this whole thing of him going on a huge win streak was never actually going to happen because he has races like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, he, he's I done. He's 52 months oh, yeah, back. No, I, no, this is over now. But, uh, okay, so let's get in top five here. Uh, Barsha fifth. He rode really well in the main. Mm -hmm. um, rode really well in his heat. Didn't qualify great. No, he, he had fast qualify. Oh, he was. That's right. Shoot, yeah. sorry. Wrong yep. person. Yep. Anyway, um, so a decent day. Just He's in, pissed at himself. In the main. Well, yeah. But you know, but again, he's in the top five, so I mean, he's still mm -hmm. consistently doing it. Um, I will continue to say that my my uh, uh, confidence, confidence and, respect. and respect for Barsha is going up on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he was on the Pulp Show last week and everything, and so yeah, he was, just looks like he's having fun, dude. Like yep. he just looks like he's having fun, and you know, you see a lot of these guys maybe because he hasn't been there for three years, other than outdoors, where he hasn't been in a win situation. So everybody knows, even if your home life is good and your team's good, but we know that the team was not good. 
and then you do worse at the races. It just mentally, it drains you. You can get you down. And you got nothing to look forward to. But, dude, on the podium, he looked like he was a 17-year-old rookie again. He just all yeah. smiles to win a heat race. I mean, dude, when he corked it and he kind of did almost like a half fist pump, like, when have we ever seen a top guy win a heat race and get elated about that? You know, and, and I'll still stand by that had he got a start, other than how Cole was riding, I still believe Barsha was going to win just for the fact that he wasn't going to fade like Kenny was because he had to come from 11th to 5th where he couldn't really focus on his own lines and ride his own race. He had to worry about making passes stick. And he was one of the guys, The first, actually he was the first guy, to pick two fast lines through the rhythm sections in practice. He was the first one to fade wide and three under the table before the finish. He was the first one to square off and three over that, 3-5-3. Three, three. And then out of nowhere, where the hell did he pick up the 3-3-2 three, three, before the second triple? I don't know, but he only did it like a couple of times. Well, yeah, because of the fact you had to square up and leave the door open yeah. and roll up high. But still, though, I saw when I saw the track map, I was like, oh, okay, somebody will just round the corner and then seat bounce it, and then with how soft he's get. But, dude, like, nobody had even looked at that the yeah. whole entire day. Yeah. So yeah. I still stand by that had he got a start, he was going to win that race. Um, 17 points down, third in the points, keeps seeing it in top fives. Dude, man, I, I don't know. Like, I just keep saying – Nobody saw this coming with him. He's in it, so or he's not out of it yet. So yeah, we'll keep 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 trucking on with him, man. Uh, okay, so next up, fourth place, Marv. Uh, this is the first really real decent ride I think I've seen him have. Yeah, since he, since A one. So um, you know, it wasn't like overly stupendous. I actually picked him to win in fantasy. Oh, you did? Uh, oh, okay. After watching Q1 and seeing mm -hmm. how terrible the track was and the whoops weren't that big, I thought, oh, here comes Marv. Like, he gets a start. The track's fairly tight. It's really technical, deep, ruddy. Um, this is, like, handpicked for, for Marv. Yeah, it's tailor-made uh, for him. But, yeah, but no, it didn't, didn't have a great main. It was okay. And then, obviously, had the Anderson incident, um, <laughs> which, obviously, we've talked about a little bit. They're they're apparently not on speaking terms. Yeah, they're not talking right now. Some of Anderson doesn't want to talk about it. Marv said they weren't on speaking terms. It just all boils down to what we've what we've been talking about here. It reaffirms in everything. The background yeah. of those two, as much as they've been getting along, they haven't been getting along because they're trying to establish a dominant. And it's two different attitudes. And those laid back. Yep. Marv is all seriousness and stuff. Yeah. Um. I think I had him in second in fantasy. Uh, obviously, I picked Marsha to win. Same thing. I thought the track would be tailor-made for him. But we saw at the end of the main, though, I think it was like the last five minutes plus one, you could tell that that shoulder still isn't 100%. Oh, yeah. He was starting. His technique was a little getting a little lackadaisical. Um, but his speed was good. But I think after the whole Anderson incident, I think it kind of got in his head mentally, and he kind of had to readjust and just calm down a little bit. And then by then, two laps later, Anderson was already moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, he looked good. I mean... Dude, we all knew that 100% Marv was gonna be in, gonna get wins. It was just how many. Mm -hmm. um, he's trending up. He's eighth in points, I think. Uh, a little bit back from maybe like ten back from Bag. I don't know the exact on that, so don't quote me on that. But uh, I mean, dude, I don't see him winning the title still. Oh no, I no, no, he, that's I over. Think he'll rattle off a couple more. He can get in the top five there. in points. Yeah, I, I mean, so. I think the best he can get to is maybe fourth because he's still like 35 plus back. Yeah. Um, looking good though. I mean. It, it, I don't know. It, it was a, it was a good night for him. I, if I'm in his camp, I'm like, okay, that's that's a good step forward. Mm -hmm. Because look at the last. I mean, last race in Glendale, he got fifth, but he got yarded pretty badly. Yeah. So the moment that shoulder gets 100, percent he'll be fine. Yep. So uh, third place, Baggett. Um, really, really good night. Finally, finally puts a start together, puts some stuff together, and I mean. It, it speed shows. was there. We he's had speed all year. Mm -hmm. We've all thought that. And actually, I know you haven't listened to uh, the pulp review yet. And but I'm gonna drop this a little bit. So okay, we all saw Baggett get real close to Anderson, and then all of a sudden he was gone. Mm -hmm. I guess what had happened was Freeze didn't move out of the main line for him for like in the three, three oh, laps, the whole track, for okay. like three laps. Okay. Um, so that kind of sucks because when I saw Baggett and Anderson real close there, I was like, ooh, sweet, they'll battle. Kenny will get the win because they're going to go back and forth a little bit. And then all of a sudden Baggett was gone. I was like, what the hell happened? Like, did he go down? Did he, you know, what what, what was the problem? Uh, but, yeah, I guess Freeze uh, didn't get out of the way, and I guess he ended up in the FIM truck at the end of the night. <laughs> so, wait, they're saying that he was, like, purposely riding the wide bike? 
No, he wasn't purposely riding a wide bike, but he, he just wasn't. He was ignoring the blue flags. Yes, then. was completely ignoring them. Well, and... that, if that's the case, I think th I I hope they just had a talk with him because I kind of like where Vince. He's not same thing. Well, seems like this is a new like profound for everybody having an understanding of what. Have to you do. noticed there's new camaraderie in the yeah. 50 class? Yes. Like everybody's pounding hands. Everybody's and, bumping yeah, fist after the races after. and stuff. Like, yeah, good yeah, job, bro. Like, great. We're like that was um, never before. I'm just glad. I don't know. I, I hope that they just had a talk with him and didn't like fight him or anything. That sucks. I I don't know, man. Like, f five laps to go, I'm sitting there, and Baggett's freight trading with those guys, and I'm thinking, dude, if one of those guys make just one small mistake and Baggett can get inside of them, Baggett can win this damn thing. Like, I was going nuts. Like, I was the only one in my house, so I was, like, screaming. I'm like, what the hell is happening right now? Um, dude, I, st I picked him for multiple wins, and if he keeps riding like this, he's only going to trend upwards, and we're going to the East Coast in two weeks, mm -hmm. and he loves that tacky dirt. I mean, I'm still going to stand by. I think he gets a win this year. I don't know when it's going to be, but I still stand by Daytona. it. Daytona. Daytona. Yep. Well, that's actually what I picked, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was Daytona. I think so. I think um, you're correct. Yeah. So, I mean, good for him. I'm glad because it's just yep. more and more parity, man. Yep. And we know that he has the speed to run up front every weekend because he proved yep. it last year. So, it's good. It's He's got to be happy with it. Yep. And so, now we're getting into the top two, which obviously Anderson won the race. Kenny was second. Um, dude, I thought Kenny was getting it, man. But he just... That track was so gnarly, and he said a couple different times now in interviews of when it gets real ruddy like that, there's just certain things he's got to compensate not, to one side. He well, he's just he's not willing to do the which big, is good though whatever because of it, and he hasn't said it directly as to it's because of what happened, but he's just not willing to do those well, we big things. But yeah. we all know it's because of what happened, which is fine because obviously finishing the race in second is better than leaving in an ambulance. Well, I think there was one specifically spot on the track that hindered him, and it actually cost him on the last lap when he passed Ando that back. That dragon's back. The dragon's off. back because when and as that top base started to get flattened out, everybody was just kind of chopping the throttle and then stretching out and doubling off so you could stay low. Every time you would land in that rut and the bike would G out and lift, he wouldn't stay committed even if he was off center where he could get the pop. He would just hesitate for a second, and then he would bounce into the face. And that, uh, if he hadn't done that, and actually he faded too far to the right and landed in that cupped out spot, if he hadn't done that, he probably was going to win that race. Yeah. Because he lost like a second, and that's where Andrew got around him. Mm -hmm. Just keeps building, man. He's 15 points down. Like, dude, he's got to be thinking, man, I have the speed to win. I'm not even at 100%. I can win this championship. Mm -hmm. And I'm still going to stand by it. I say he wins this championship. 15 points down is not a lot. It's not. If you're not 100%, now, if he was 100% and this was happening, be a little bit worried, but we all know whether you're a Kenny fan or not. That's not 100% Kenny. No. So yeah, it's he. He's way more confident than he was at A1. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. And but he hasn't crashed yet this he year. He hasn't crashed yet this year, which has never happened in the three years he's been in Supercross. <laughs> Usually by round five, yes. he's hit the deck. Especially in Oakland. Especially in Oakland. Um, but yeah, it was just I don't know. He's close. He's really yes. close. I think he's gonna get one. Hopefully by midway. And yeah. I here's what I'm gonna say: if he gets one by midway. Which will be what? Raymond, San Diego 6, Arlington 7, and then Raymond James Stadium. So, so Tampa. Yeah. Tampa. So yep. if he gets one by Tampa, he we're golden. I think he's going to win the title. Yeah, yeah. we're golden. We say he, we like we're in the Ken Rocks camp, but we're golden. I'm in the Ken Rocks camp. We're Ken. golden. At Phoenix, I was around the Honda truck quite a bit. Hanging out with Eric Kehoe. Outside of the banners. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, but Anderson... Dude, consistency is his new do you, name. Do you think the doubters are 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 gone now? Can you really doubt this kid? I don't know. We man. keep we talk we just we pumped up Kenny, but he's 15 points ahead of Kenny. Yeah, yeah and he's got two wins now. Yeah, I don't know. Can we can can we? I'm still waiting for him to hit the deck, man. Like I said, but hasn't he proven though that I I don't know if it's coming. I think the only thing I want to be there. Well, he hit the deck in practice, and then he goes out and wins though. Yeah, I, I know. Did you hear that he snapped the subframe when it tagged his back? Did he really? Yeah, it broke I the heard, subframe. I heard his back was pretty jacked up, but no, I didn't hear he broke the subframe. Yeah, but that I mean that was gnarly, and he even said he's like, dude, the rest of the day I was kind of like shaky on that on off. I was like, I don't know, um, whatever. But I think right now I will say. If everybody's waiting for him to hit the deck, I think the only mistake you're going to see from Mando is a start. Because I think he's backed it down and he's learned all these years from Dunge, looking up to his quote-unquote big brother, because he treat, like he looked up to Dunge and he said how much he wanted to reminisce, or not reminisce, but like mirror his image and game off of what Dunge did from all those years learning from him. I think that he has finally got into his head that I don't need to make en enemies, I don't need to make every pass dirty going to the front, and if I just stay on two wheels, I can win. 
And man, did he's. He, I mean, he's hard to bet against right now, but man, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm not a believer in that yet. I'm more of a how believer many, in Barsha at this point than I am that Ando won't I, hit the ground. Honest question, point. how many rounds do you got to get in with Anderson before, and, and I'm not. We got to go through the whole year. I got to see him go what? whole year okay. without making a major mistake. Hypothetical question, what happens if we get to round 10 and he's 28 points up? Are you still going to believe that the crash is coming? Well, I mean... Because that, that would have meant that he would have won a f quite a few rounds in the next five rounds. Yeah, I'm still going to think it's coming. And so, like I said, until we go through a whole year and he could do it, like, okay, if he can do it where it's no worse than what Dungey did last year, where it was basically first turn crashes that screwed him up mm -hmm. on his bad days, then I will be like, okay, cool, he's 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 legit now. He's well, figured it out. But, even if he does crash, though, and he has over a 20-point lead, it really won't matter unless he has oh, a yeah. function. Yeah. So he's, it's like he's if he's far, that yeah. cushion. So even if he's far enough, it won't really matter if he has a bad race. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I want to get to one thing before we moved on to the 250s and stuff, because I think we pretty much covered everything. I want to kind of... I don't think that Dungey, because I've heard this a lot, if people thought Dungey would be racing right now, they're like, oh, man, he'd have a 25-point lead. I'm going to dispute that. I don't think Dungey would have the lead right now because, okay, Anderson's been top five every round. Kenny and Barsha have been top five round every other than A2. And I can't definitively say that Dungey would have won a race by now. The only one I could really say is maybe the Triple Crown race at A2 because you know his starts would have been on point and it's hard-pressed to say that he would have got worse than fifth two races. But I'm here to tell you, man, I don't know if Dungey was racing right now, if he'd even be in the top three because I don't know if he'd be able to match Anderson, Barsha, and Kenny's pace. I don't think so. I just all I've been hearing is, oh man, Dungey's got to be yeah. salivating at the mouth because he'd be at the points later by thirty points. No, guys, I don't think he would. I don't think he would have won a race by now. I don't know. It depends because that creates a whole different set of circumstances. Because now then you're mentally in these guys' heads of we have to be perfect every week out. But I don't think with so, the way Bar maybe uh, Kenny, but I don't think with the way Barsha and Anderson are riding this year, I don't think you can get in their heads mentally. I don't think anything is creeping into their mind about hey, we can't win. I don't know. That's a major bench racing topic. It is. That would take hours to do. I just say I don't think he'd be the points leader. I'll just so, say that. I don't think he'd be the points leader. All right. Anything else four fifties before we move on to the, to the lights? Uh, Class. No. Nope. Okay. Here we are, 250, small bikes, lights, class, whatever the hell you want to call it. One BMX light. Whoa, whoa, this is not 12 years now. Well, could be. Stay dog know. isn't out there. You never know. Anyway, um, all right, let's start at the bottom, work our way up again. AC, go ahead, you talk about him. I'm sad. <laughs> I can't talk. Dude, I just want to know what he was thinking. I understand he got a shit jump and he got pinched, but he literally tried to go inside the bail. Tried, like, to, tried to Jason Lawrence. Bro, what did you think you were going to do? Get a gap, go inside the bail, and then just literally like run it in on 13 different people going forward? He was jumping the bail, dude. He was did, you, did you see that people were calling him a cheater? They were like, oh, uh, man, he's going back to his amateur days. I go, I've seen AC ride for a very long time, pretty much his whole career, and he was really never a cheater as an amateur. Um, he was just good. He Sorry. was just good. Uh, yeah, man, it just kind of goes along with the AC story, and it almost kind of goes back to our end of our conversation last week, talking about how long are we going to give him before you stop saying giving him a win. Is he, uh, so question, is he, is he like Stewart, like the mm. fastest dude that can't put it together? Well, whoa, whoa, Stewart has seven championships and over 110 wins. He's only got two Supercross titles, though. No, 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 you can't. I get what you're saying, and I would agree on that point. But like, I, let's we have to find a different person to compare to because let's we be gotta right. find a different guy. Stewart has seven championships and 110 wins. A blue AC, Stewart in the back of a bus one. How many? Know. How many wins does AC have in Supercross? Two. I don't know. Yeah. So no. he's got five. He won three. In okay. So he's year. got he's got five to fifty. He's got five in no titles in. One full season. He's basically. got five with no titles. Ba well, basically now with where we are in this season. He's yeah, I'm just getting out. Let, let's just find a different five wins. Let's just find a different person because five <laughs> wins and no championships to fifty and four or five. Or I mean, granted, he won three and then was out and then didn't race for two yeah. years and then won two last year and lost the title by two points. No, AC is. I'd have to think about that. No, let's AC. Man, he's he's out of the championship. Like he's done. Sure. He's out. He's got. Sure. He's got no way. I mean, sure. What, do you believe he has a chance? I don't... Anybody in the 250 class has a chance. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, man. Okay, He's, Michael Lieb is out. <laughs> Dude, not cool. He was in my pulp fantasy. Don't, I don't care. Just, He's out. He's not a title contender. How, the rest of these guys we're talking about 
I'm in still. Well, Amar top too. He Wait, but you there. actually believe AC still has a shot? I don't know, man. Dude, he, like we just talked about when we... But he hasn't gotten a win yet. Takes. But he, he has, hasn't gotten a win yet. He was 18 points down going into the last round last year. Come on, dude. Now, like, granted, okay, here's what we got left, okay? We obviously have the uh, uh, Triple Crown in Atlanta. We have the... Uh, well, they won't be there for that. Or, no, I'm sorry. We have the East, East West, the, two, the second East West, East shootout West in Indy, in Indy. Yeah. and then obviously the final Vegas, and then it's what Seattle and Utah yeah. and yep. San Diego is what we have left. So I mean, Utah and San Diego, or I'm sorry, Utah and uh, Seattle. I mean, we're pretty much looking at probably Plessinger is going to win those. The way he's looking, and so how he likes those. Places. AC, well, we're looking at it right now, dude. Like we'll see it in the points for a second. Like, dude, I'm sorry, I, I want to give AC the benefit of the doubt. It's like a, it's like a one percent chance he's going to pull it off at this point. To me, he would have to win out. But here, and and that's the thing though. Even though the start technically he got a bad jump, so he got pinched. So it is still your fault because your action time was crap. But being smart enough to try, try to cut in the bail and then get stuck on the bail and just roll through the corner instead of rolling it's through the so corner. Awesome. It's just it's the ace. It's it's what happens with AC. Yeah. Like the dumb mistakes, man. Yep. And I know, I know. I, I, I like I said, I still want to give the benefit of the doubt, but he's got no shot. I'm sorry, he he's got no shot. He hasn't won one yet, and he would have to win out to to even become close. It just it sucks for him, pretty much, because he got back to what seventh. Yeah, seventh. So, all right. So, what did you think of Craig's night? <laughs> I feel so gutted for that kid. Let's launch to flat. Like, bro, finally, putting in the best race of your life. Better than at least in Glendale, because Glendale was a different story, because you could say that Coop got stuck behind who was ever in second that, oh, I think it was Joey. He got stacked up with Joey for about three or four laps, so couldn't really, you know, close the gap on Craig and pace him. Craig was going to win this race had he not just G'd out and then cross it and launched into the middle of the where the flaggers sit. This wasn't Honda's night. But it man, night? I just I feel bad for him because I picked Plessinger to win. Obviously, going back to uh, the Glendale wrap up, but I'm watching Craig in practice and I go, dude, this is the first time he's literally I've been on point from the start of the day all the way into the night show. He's just killing it, and he gets a start, gaps everybody, gone. I mean, they were closing the gap on him a little bit, but we still had so much of the main to go. That is a Christian Craig that everybody expects him to be on a week in week out basis. And it just sucks that he finally couldn't pull it out. I don't know, man. It's it's kind of it goes back to it why was. nobody in this 250 class you can bank on winning. Yep. It just it sucks though because had he got a win, I'd have been so pumped for that kid. Yeah. So. But he's still only at one. Yeah, he's still at one. So Amart comes back. Good good night for him. Just faded. Leads. I mean, well, yeah, well he's been out. Yeah. He literally said like last week was week three. He started riding the bike, and this week he raced. You think he can keep getting top fives? With him racing himself back into shape, I know we only got like four or five rounds left or whatever. Maybe. It is. Oh, oh, I don't really. I don't, I don't have any opinions on Amart at this point, really. Let's go I to mean, Shane. It was a good showing, but yeah, let's go to Shane first before we get into the top. Yeah. Three. Okay. So Shane had a tough night. Yeah. Uh, what is heat race? Yep. Looked good, and I was mm -hmm. like, all right, cool. We're rolling on the Shane train again. Mm -hmm. And then main time, eh. I mean. It was just, it was a crash, mm. and then it was... They just kept compounding. Yeah, it, it got worse. It just, and they had another crash, like, he got tangled up, and... I like, though, that he didn't pull off. And, yeah, but no, all I'm kept going. All I'm thinking is, dude, okay, AC is 25 points back. Um, all I kept thinking is, is, man, other than the fact that it would have been, it was a mechanical last year at, uh, at Arlington, it was a fuel pump, I'm thinking, man, here we go again. Like, Shane's in perfect spot to win this championship, and then just something stupid. He pulls in, and I'm like, oh, it's done. And then I'm glad he got back on. He pushed his way forward. I don't, I can't remember exactly what he finished. I think it was like 13th or something. But, um, man, I feel bad for him because we always do. And people like talk about the shit on Shane thing. Like, you just conveniently forget him. Yep. Um, but because he is so much better in Supercross than he is outdoors, I know that he's, he keeps saying, you know, anybody's in this. But, man, and we'll get to it with AP, you know, but. Right now, I have a hard time believing that anybody's going to be able to get in there with Joey and, and Shane, or Joey and AP, unless it's the East-West Showdowns, where you get everybody from the East mixing it up, because AP now keeps getting starts, and Joey hasn't been off the box. Well, he was off the box last weekend, but he keeps getting top fives. It's going to be really hard. I think, for Shane's sake, he's going to have to win, at least win the next, at least win two races to which have I a shot think, at winning this time. I think I'll have a good shot at San Diego. San Diego, good. Hard packed and stuff. And then obviously like the East-West shootout, you know, that'll start bringing in a lot more uh, drama and stuff. But yep. he, I don't know. I feel bad for him. I do too. So um, anyway, let's get in the top three here. Uh, Savachi, another solid night. I mean, <laughs> dude, 
Honestly, I thought after Hill got around him and he started dropping back a little bit, I think it took him like three laps to just calm himself down because I think things started happening fast for him. You know, his technique was a little bit off. He was G'd out a little bit harder and he wasn't setting up perfect for the landing. I think it took him three laps to calm down because I'm watching him going, man, he's going back quick. And I'm like, oh crap, he's getting that up off the box. And then all of a sudden things just started clicking. He started dropping the hammer. I'm like, ooh, I'm like, all right, we're back in it and stuff. But man, I can't believe with 1.5 seconds and two laps to go behind Plessinger, and they're catching Plessinger, Joey decides to be a jackass and pull off the dumbest move of the night and try to just focus on making the pass stick with Hill instead of just rounding the corner and being able to hook the triple. Because, dude, did you think the same thing as me? They could have caught Plessinger. Oh, yeah. They could have caught him. I'm not saying they would have got around him, but they could have caught him. And Joey just decided to be an idiot. Whoa, whoa. No, I'm just watching it, and wow. I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're an idiot. Oh, yeah. No, that was a dumb move. That was a stupid move. I'm like, man, race crap. was dying. If he was dying hard. Yeah, he was. At that point. And yeah, all it would have taken was literally around the corner, you do the triple, you get him somewhere else in the track where you can carry more mm -hmm. speed, and you guys catch him, and you guys end up 1-2 on the box. I just, I'm watching that, and I go, I knew what was going to happen. They kept going back and forth, and when Hill squared down underneath him before the rhythm section and stuff, you know, on Hill's part, though, he also should have had a better race craft to square down and let Joey track out in the corner. But I'm watching, and I go... I just, I knew it was going to happen. I'm sitting there, I go, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, I can't believe you just did that. But, I mean, dude, second place again, eight points back. I mean, <laughs> he's still in it. He's and, still he, in and he's it. not making that one big mistake that he did last year that not cost yet. him so many times. Not yet. So. May take till Vegas. It'll happen. I have faith. Uh, I don't just think like so. Anderson crashing. I, I have faith. I don't think so, man. So, I don't think so. Um, so, Hill finally has a good night, and... Who the hell knows why? I talked to you about this in the group mm -hmm. chat. I said I was wa what race did I say I was watching? Was I don't know. You're watching the race though. Or and he still hopped the fast. Yeah, line. he like framed something and then still tripled that or threed out of the rhythm section. And I'm like, okay, that bike is fine. There's nothing wrong with that bike. It's him. So which is weird because he said on the podium he didn't ride it all this week. Yeah, or last week. Which honestly though, I I know a lot of people guys say that and stuff. It's just kind of like the. I don't know. It's just something they say to guy that can get in people's heads. You know, hey, I didn't ride this weekend. I did this good. But I honestly believe, though, with as many guys that showed up to the race sick, that maybe it was just a bug. Everybody ended up being in the same airport or whatever. Who knows? But for somebody like Hill to say something like that, who doesn't normally make excuses, and he really hasn't. Like, he said it even last year. What was it? Uh, he got his first win. And I remember you saying this to me that, hey, man, I crashed a bunch of times last year. He doesn't make excuses. I kind of believe him. Mm -hmm. I really do. So I don't know what is up with Hill, to be I, honest with you. I, I think, And he still doesn't look like last year's Hill. That's I, the thing. I think he, plain and simple, doesn't want to ride the 250. No. And this has been openly discussed throughout yeah. the industry. We've heard on multiple shows and podcasts and everything else. And I heard the other day somebody go, you know what? If he really doesn't want to ride the 250 that bad, he's not in a spot to win the title. When you go east, put him on fucking 450 and say, prove yourself, asshole. But the, problem is, they, but the problem is they don't have the money to do that with Mookie, though. I know. That's what sucks, but I would totally do that. He's going to be a 450 guy. I, he's going to be a lot better on the 450, but the problem on, is... I'd put him on for the east. I mean, I know, like you said, money, but I would be like, I would be like, you know what, we'll just go and pull a practice bike out here and throw some stuff on it and go see how you do there, big guy. But Show the, us that you're that good. I think he would be. I mean, it fits the style. He's a smooth guy. He's one of those naturally... But the problem is, I keep saying this, if he doesn't do anything at Supercross this year, you know he's not an outdoor guy. He doesn't put as much effort into it. He's going to obviously have the ride. That was part of his contract. But he ain't going to get the money, he thought. He's, I, you know what? Even if he gets six figures, it's going to be on the low side. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, man. I'm just happy, but I'll still say he doesn't look like the same guy last year. Last year, it was definitive. Without a doubt, you could tell in his riding how fluid he was. He was without a doubt the fastest guy. This year, I don't know, but if he keeps trending up, and Craig, you know, if he can at least put a whole race together and at least get on the box, it's going to mix things up for everybody because those were the only two other guys other than Shane, AP, Joey, and AC that we thought they could get in the top five. And for Hill, if this is just a mental thing and him not wanting to ride the 250 and now that he struggled, he could just blame it like, hey, bike's crap, you know, I'm struggling, whatever, no real other incentive to go forward. And now that he finally got a second and isn't really putting all the effort into it, well, now he might actually be where, hey, man, I can still win and not even be the best I was last year. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, good, though. Good to see him get on the podium. And finally, the guy who died. Yeah. Plessinger. Died. Um, 
I'll just I'll just ask it outright now that his starts are on point. Uh, is everybody else in trouble? A little bit, yes. <laughs> a lot. He died, dude. No, he okay. Died. He he got off his bike. He fell. Well, he didn't fall down. He sat down, laid down, whatever. After he won, I that mean, he race, took a nap on the back side. Yeah, of that let's be real. He took yeah, a nap. he took a nap, and then you know. It, so the kids on on death's door riding, mm -hmm. and and it was not wins that race. Yeah, like, he, and clearly better. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they're in trouble. Let's see. Uh, he's proven he can get a sh crap start and work his way through. He did in Houston. Uh, he's proven that he's without a doubt the fastest guy because he's got three wins now. And now the only other thing that was lacking is his starts, and he's gotten two good starts in a row. And I know people say, well, it's only two weekends. But for a guy like Aaron Plessinger, who it's always been a mental thing, it's never been the talent, it's never been the speed, it's never been the bike, you start adding all those things up, and you start just building up, and you start writing off your checklist, that's all he needs for a little bit of extra motivation and just a little bit more on the mental side of it is, hey, that's a confidence boost. Dude, I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, everybody's in trouble because he's got eight points on Savachi. If he wins another race, I'll just go out and say, if he wins San Diego this weekend, he wins out. He wins the rest of the rounds. It's going to be like Hill and Zacho last year. He's going to be definitively the fastest guy. Nobody's going to beat him. And, dude, if he wins this title... And I'm not gonna get too far ahead of myself. Everybody's in trouble from outdoors too. Mm-hmm. So yep. So anything else we're gonna cover on 250s before we uh, wrap this up here? Before we get into the top threes for next weekend? Uh, no, not really. Okay, cool. We have to do top threes. Give me your winners for next weekend. San uh, Diego, 250s and 450s. Uh, I'll say Plessinger wins, and uh, I'm just gonna stick with it. I say Marsha wins. I say he gets a start and wins. I think that Shane's gonna win the 250 class, and I think Kenny's gonna pull his first one off next week. Really? Yep. Uh, where's Tomac finish? Because I'm just curious. I don't know, man. If you were to just throw a dart at a board, where would you say he finishes next week? Fifth. Like, bad start in fifth, or just like fifth because he's just off and he doesn't care anymore? Uh, bad start in fifth. All right. All right. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Okay. So, all right. So, this has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show presented by TLR Coatings. Thanks for watching. Again, make sure to check them out, tlrcoatings.com, for all your powder coating needs. They do shipping and everything. Um, also, don't forget, follow us over on Facebook, Instagram. Go on Patreon. Donate some money to us if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Go to Amazon. Buy something through the links down below in the description. That'll help us out. Go buy a T-shirt on Teespring. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We will see everybody. East Preview coming next weekend. Yes. 250 East Preview yes. coming next weekend. Yes. So... Yeah, we will uh, do the 250 East preview of San Diego show next week. And, uh, yeah, get ready to go. And cool. We'll see everybody next week after San Diego. Dude, I don't know why. I mean, you want me to open a window? or I don't fucking know. Go for it, dude. I'm not I don't know really going to open a window. It's not that cold in here, man. Well, you're a dick. Why'd you offer that? Why'd you not do it? Dick shitty. Freaking shitty.